me, Debbie Hilly, and this is Bailey. And we're gonna cover how to groom a schnauzer today. If you're getting this video and you're watching it, then you've gotten my booklet and the two go hand in hand together. It's a very simple concept and yet a lot of people have a hard time following how to groom a schnauzer. As I discussed in the opening of my book, um, it's the standard groom. Once you learn how to groom it, you can groom anything. When you learn how to groom a schnauzer, you can literally groom any dog in the world because the pattern sort of, kind of, is the exact same across the board. A few tweaks, but in most dogs, you're going to see some angulation to emphasize a shoulder, emphasize a rump, emphasize angulation here. And the lines are all the same, even if the technique is a little different. Grooming by numbers is really making it not that hard. A lot of people really seriously believe that grooming is complicated and it's really not. You have a certain five basic patterns and this is one of them, the long-legged terrier pattern and it corresponds to poodles. If you look at a poodle and a lamb trim it's very very similar. The angulation is the same just not as defined. Cocker spaniel, lines are different, patterns the same, Shizu in like a lamb trim or a teddy bear trim, same thing, longer body. So as you can see, it pretty much all ties in together. And once you learn how to groom a schnauzer correctly, you can groom anything. Now, we're going to start off with our Bravira. She's already had a bath. She's been brushed out, I hope. This is my Utsumi comb, and it'll get out anything that's left in there. Um... We're gonna start off with her prep work. And I have my clipper set on a 30 blade for the feet. And as you can see here, I'm not gonna scoop down in, I'm just gonna sort of skim across. There are reasons for that. I live in an area where we have a lot of fungus and a lot of grass irritation. Dogs chew their feet an awful lot here. I don't believe in scooping out the pads unless you absolutely have to. The hair in the pad provides a lot of protection. And I do this on pretty much every dog. Now, if I have a dog who has mats in there, of course you get those out. But if you have it scissored close to the top of the pad or cut with a clipper close to the top of the pad. And of course, everybody wants to know how you keep the mats out. You comb them. After I've done what I just did, I'm gonna comb that out real quick and anything that hangs out scissor it over. A lot of times I can just look and tell that they're already not matted and I don't worry about it. She is a foot digger and chewer. Now I'm going to do the, the last foot with a shear to show you how I do it. But you'll notice I'm pretty much just going right across the top. Comb it, nothing popped on that one. Now, if I'm going to use my scissors to do it, let me step around to the other side. I lift the foot up and I use curb shears with the curve out. So I am literally scissoring straight across, but because the curve is out, It's not going to cut the pad. I do that on pets that are especially sensitive. That you literally just scissor across and scissor flush. And it's hard to see on this foot. But there you go. Just basically scissor flat across like that. And notice I have not done her nails yet. I will do her nails last because on schnauzers, sometimes you don't get the nails done. Now, the belly. She has a tendency to razor burn, but she also has a hooded vulva. So we're fighting that. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that's a vulva that is really small and is actually tucked up. In fact, let's turn you around so they can see what I'm talking about. 
It's not my rear loop. This is a different rear loop. On her, her vulva literally is tucked up. It's called a hooded vulva. I can put my finger that deep in front of it. It is literally up inside. And to get it cleaned out, you have to literally spread it and shave it. Generally speaking, I would not leave hair on it at all with it being hooded. I like to get those incredibly clean, but she is incredibly sensitive there and will irritate. I have this on a nine setting right now. When I did the little bit in there, up in the hooded area that I did first, I did it with a 30, just skimming, not touching the skin. And then I'm gonna use my nine setting just to get right inside the legs and right along the belly line. A lot of people like to lift dogs up and do their bellies. I don't like to do that. I'd rather lift a leg up. It's a little more comfortable for them. Lift up to the side like that. Shave the belly. Now she's chubby, but we won't tell her. So you have to make sure that you get the hair from the inside, that little crease right there. And on the inside of the thigh, turn back around, baby. The outside line follows the muscle, and the inside line also follows the muscle. So those are your lines, and it's very self-explanatory. Under the tail. Ah, ah, ah. Now she can sit down, and that's fine. Now, schnauzers a lot of times don't like to have their tails done. And if you're going to try to trim underneath one and it doesn't like it, you can literally roll it like that. If you can't lift the tail up, let's say the dog bites you and you lift the tail up, you can literally roll the skin around to where you're on this side and then roll it this way. And you can do it without raising the tail. Depending on how the tail was cropped, or docked rather, it can be an issue for some dogs. They have some residual pain or some tenderness around it and they don't want it messed with. If it was cropped or docked correctly, you wouldn't have that problem. But in some cases, there's some residual damage. Now, I'm gonna do the head first because that's just the way I operate. want to get it where you can see what I'm doing. So we're going to move in a little closer. You're going to lose me, but you'll be able to see the head. Okay, babe. Now I have my setting on a nine again. Pretty much the whole dog is going to be done with the Bravira. And I start at the occiput, right at the back of the head. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's the little bone right there. Some people call it a smart knot, the occiput. And I come backwards. When I get to the eyebrows, I float off into the eyebrow. Eyebrow placement is tricky, but it's really not that complicated if you know how to do it. If you'll take your finger and roll it down the eye, you'll feel it drop off. There's a ridge right there, and then your finger falls onto the eyeball. When your finger falls onto the eye, that's your line. It should go to right there. If you leave it too far back, you're going to have very, very thick, bushy brows. And if you go too far forward, you're not going to have enough. But there's a ridge right above the eye, and your finger will fall into it. Literally, it will stop. And that's your setting. And again, I go backwards. Now, around ears, be very careful. I like to keep my fingers there to prevent myself from nicking the ear. And like I said, when I come across the top of the eyebrow, I'm coming flat down. Come from the head to the top of the eyebrow and come flat down. Now, there is a lot of confusion on where to set lines on the Schnauzer beard. And it's actually fairly simple. What we hear all the time is connect the moles from eyebrow to mole to mole, and that's true with one exception. Many schnauzers have a whisker mole 
right about here, way out here. She does, but I can't seem to find it. There it is right there. It's right there, right in there. And if you follow that mole, you're gonna have the wrong setting. So from under the ear, again, forward, I do all of the head work backwards unless the dog is very sensitive. So we're gonna take off that hair. And when we get to the, I lift the eyebrow up so I can see my line. Let me get to the corner of the eye and then sort of float out. And then whisker mole is here in line with the eye. And then there is another whisker mole right there under the chin. And underneath, you can see the whisker mole again is right there. You want to go to that. And then as you come around the side again to the eye, then make sure that your eyebrows are separated and there's not a unibrow. I do something here on pets that's a little unique. Some people don't like it. This is what I do. And you don't have to do this. You, but you do want to separate it. I use a blade. And you can use a thinner, but I prefer a blade. And I do that. I do a lot of schnauzers and people really like the fact that they can see the eyes and that the brows are defined really well. So I'm going to take the corner of my blade, just like this and skim out roughly one finger width on this dog. It will vary depending on the dog's face, but one, eye, one finger width is usually pretty good. And right in between the eyes, I clear out the stop in a V shape with the corner of my blade. Then, right in front of the eyes, I come up again. And what I end up with is like a diamond shape in here that I clear out. Do not shave down the nose. That's a no-no. But I do shave right in front of the eyes on the nose for cleanliness because otherwise they tend to get goopy and then they can't see because it grows up into their faces. Now, your eye line should really come to just barely inside the eye. And I mean just barely, maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch, depending on the dog. You see here, I've done that there. And so there we go. Now, before we get to ears, let's finish the neckline. You can actually see where there's a U-shape growing here automatically. Take that out backwards unless the dog irritates. If the dog irritates, go with the grain. And then on the sides, I come down with the grain. And again, you can see where that line is because it pretty much sets itself naturally. Right in there, just like you would on a poodle. And she's sliding on the table cover, but it'll be okay. And that sets your neckline. It's really fast and really simple. Ears are different and tricky. She happens to have cropped ears, which make it even more fun. Let me see if I can raise the table up. There we go. And I'm going to set my blade on a 15 for the outside of this ear because it's cropped. If it was not cropped, I might use a 10, I might use a 15. It would just depend on how tight I want it. But please note that I have the ear flat on my fingers and I'm keeping it that way for the duration of what I'm doing. On the back half, my finger goes inside the bell because this is a bell-shaped crop and I really don't like it very much, but that's what we're dealing with. So we put our thumb in the side, keep the ear flat and you won't nick it. Scoop the hair out from behind the ear because on a, on a crop that's done this particular way, there are a lot of little holes. There's some divots here. There's a divot here that you wouldn't have normally, but you have to be really careful. Keeping it flat, even if it's not cropped, is always a really good idea though. And I use my finger as a guide for edging. Now I'm going to turn this to a 40 setting for inside the ear. And again, watch, I'm pinching the ear. I'm going to open it up first and get all of the hair out from the inside of the ear canal. 
And again, notice that I'm using the corner of my blade. Make sure you can see. If she wants to lay down, she can lay down. And then to get the inside of the ear, I'm going to lay it flat, my finger flat on the back, and roll over the edge. Again, everything is flat. I'm using my finger as like a board almost to keep the ear flat. And along the edge, I'm going to scissor it later, but I'm going to use the comb or the blade rather almost like a scissor along the edge, nice and tight. Same here, nice and tight. Roll it off the edge like that and you'll get a nice finish without having a whole lot of extra work to do. And then you all know how I feel about plucking ears, but in this case, we're gonna have to pluck ears. So, put a little bit of ear powder on my fingers, not down in the ear. I'm gonna pull only what will come out easily. With the cropped ear, sometimes you have to pluck ears because they fold the ear in such a way that you can't really get down in there easily otherwise. And because the bottom of this ear, because it is a bell-shaped crop, the bottom of the ear is actually, inside the ear is actually what should be on the outside. They take a section out and fold it in. So I'm dealing with more hair inside an ear than I should have or would have had normally. But if it's not coming out easily, using my fingers, I'm not gonna do it. So there we go. Mission accomplished. Now I can take my blade, now that I know what's coming out, and get right inside that little crook right there. And right there. And remember, I'm using a 40 blade on the inside of an ear, and I do that almost all the time, almost continuously. And now we'll do the same thing over here. Come here. And again, the key is to keep the ear flat. If you keep the ear flat, then there's not gonna be any nicking. A lot of times dogs who have had ears cropped have got a lot of ridges. And I will admit hers is not like that. Hers are really pretty smooth. Um, and those ridges are from the sutures that got left in a little longer than they really needed to be there. But she's not like that, so we're all good on that. If you have those ridges, you have to be incredibly careful that you don't hit them with a blade because they will bleed every time. And then the dog is going to hate having its ears done completely and totally. Can you turn this way? Thank you. So. There we go. When I'm not trying to show you, it goes a lot quicker. Again, ear powder on my fingers, not down in the ear. Uh -uh -uh. The reason for that is actually very simple. If you full, fill the ear with, ear with ear powder, then it's hard to get out and it can actually clog the ear canal and cause infections. Turn that way. A lot of this hair is not ready to come out and if it's not ready to come out, I'm not gonna be able to get it out. You can see how it's being a little difficult to pull and she's not happy about it. So I'm gonna take my little bitty scissor and go down in there and scissor it out because I'm not gonna be the cause of a problem later. All right, now, if you're not happy with the edge that you got with your clipper, that's when you take your small scissor. And by keeping it between your fingers, you know where the edge of the ear is. And I never use a large shear for this. I always use a small one because a large one, you don't have as much control. With a small one, you have plenty of control. Now, there we go. 
Ears are done. Head basic shape is done. And now I'm going to adjust the camera so we can get the whole body in the shot. Let's see how that does. All right, babe, stand up. I'm not forcing her up. My hand is under her jaw, not under her throat. Let's get some hair off of here. Normally I don't groom on the table covers. This one just happened to be here. Do dry on them. We don't normally groom on them. And all the hair is now stuck in her feet because of the table cover. All right. Now, because I've already got most of my prep work done, we're going to talk about skin for a minute. A lot of schnauzers in a lot of areas have a lot of skin problems. I am very fortunate that very few of ours do. She has some allergy issues, and you might can even see some flakiness in here, but very, very few of my dogs have what we call schnauzer bumps or comedones, um, the blackheads or the loss of hair along the spine. I have a firm belief it's genetic, more so than environmental or food or even related to clipping. I believe it's genetic. Um, we used to see a lot of it. We also used to see a lot of really bad temperaments, a lot of really horrid coats. And then a breeder went out of business and lo and behold, no more bad tempers to speak of. Once in a while maybe, but very few. No skin problems, no thin coats. None of those problems will exist anymore. Some people will tell you, you should never cut a dog shorter than a five blade. Well, if I did that here in my town, I would not have any schnauzers to groom. I do most everybody with a nine or 10 using my bravura. Um, she's gonna get done in a nine. And if I don't like it, then I'll switch to a 10. But basically the line is going to start at the head and I come straight down the back with one or two passes, depending upon how fat the dog is. And she's pretty chubby. And then I come down on the sides. So let's get started. And I'm going to try to do this in a way that you can see what I'm doing. And hopefully I'm not in the way of what we're doing. Yeah, it's pretty clear. Now, she comes about every four weeks, so we don't have a real problem. She is fat, and there's a sense she's sagging. And if you'll watch what I do when I push my, put my hand under and push, her top line gets straighter. A little trick to get a smoother finish. But right down the back, she's going to take three passes down the back. Because she's so wide. And then I'm going to follow the lay of the hair. It'll get stuck in your head if you sing it. Follow the lay of the hair. Should never do that. It always makes me crazy, but I do it all the time. So from here, I'm going to go to the shoulder. Here, I'm going to come this way. Then it starts to go a little bit this way. Just watch the lay of the hair. When you're setting your lines, you come off the neck down to the shoulder. If you run your hands down, it will literally stop like it just did there, and you'll have a V shape. That hair gets cut out or blended into the leg. On the back, you run your hand down. There's your muscle line. Two fingers, and I'm on the front of the leg. You're going to cut the leg this way to blend in. Three to four fingers above the hock. And look, there's your muscle line. It's very easy. But if you move your hand down, it will literally land where the muscle is supposed to be exposed, and you clipper that out. Now, let's get back to her body. Notice, please, that when I get to the shoulder, I'm sort of floating off and blending down into the leg. That's going to leave me with fill hair here that's longer than up here, and it'll allow me to blend with my clipper as opposed to having to use a blending shear. And I also notice that I'm stretching the dog's skin. That's because she's chubby, and I don't want to have a problem here we have some dips because she's got a couple of fatty tumors, so we're going to go around them. But again, notice I'm following the lay of the hair everywhere I go. Now on the back, I do that a lot. I turn it off a lot. Wall, if you're listening, move the button. 
Anyway, when I get into here, I'm going to curve it out and go down like that. See, there's hardly any blending to do. It's already done for me. If you have a really obese dog and you really need to do something, you can roll the hair further to the side. Just pull the skin that direction and it'll roll it. And it'll give you a flat surface to work on. She's not quite that bad. Now, if you're wanting to figure out how to set your line underneath the dog to get rid of the skirt, because a lot of people, well, what happened? I don't understand that. I'm sorry about that. But it's a free video, so there you go. Anyway, when you come down across the dog, a lot of people don't understand how to get rid of the skirt, and a lot of people leave it way up here. It shouldn't be up there. In fact, there is no skirt on a dog. You're going to leave just a little bit of fringe on the schnauzer. What you can do, and this is a trick that I learned from Pina, Irina Pinkochevitz, and I just screwed up her name, Pinkosevich, Pinkochevic, something like that. Call her Pina. Anyway, learned this during my certification testing. If you will take a comb or a pen or pretty much anything and lay it in the middle of your dog, make sure that it's in the middle of your dog, and then take your clipper and aim towards that comb. It's going to blend it and it's going to set it for you. Pretty cool trick, actually. You can do the same thing here. Put it where you want it and aim towards the comb. I always tell people to aim towards the table. Well, on a schnauzer where you're wanting to come underneath the body, aim towards the middle of the dog. And if putting a comb there helps you get that line better, then by all means put a comb there till you figure it out. <laughs> now, on the chest area, turn around, babe. Turn around. Schnauzers don't get bibs either something I see a lot of. You want to take the same blade that you're using on the body, regardless of what it is. And I don't care what you use. Use whatever makes you comfortable and your clients happy. Take the same blade and come straight down towards the table, down into the leg, straight down towards the table. And that takes off that whole bib. And let's get this side done real quick to match. Let me turn her around. She's getting old and crotchety. Kind of like me. But she has a decent coat. This is what we see in the grooming shops a lot. And again, here, I'm pulling that up to be able to blend it down and in a little better. And the same thing here. Lay your comb under the dog if you need to. Come straight down towards your comb. If I were going to go straight down, I would hit my comb. Just like that. I would come down and into the comb. See? You come down and into the comb. I don't need it after so many years of having done this. And I hardly ever have to do this anymore because I can eyeball it. But for those of you who are not sure of your lines, not sure of your pattern, that's the way to set it. And again, the skirt comes off underneath the dog. And I'm going to use the term skirt because that's what we all call it. I know schnauzers don't get skirts, but they get a fringe. And just to make it easier, I'm going to say skirt because that's what we all know that by. And I'll have hair in my mouth. Imagine that. At any rate, if I use that terminology, you will at least know what I'm talking about. But, as you can see, she doesn't have a skirt. She's going to have a fringe. Now, she is incredibly chubby. So, when I get under here, I'm literally going to be cutting off at belly level. If you took all of this off, she would look awful. And you would see the nipple area back here that's really sagging. And we don't want to do that. She's never had puppies, but she looks like she's had puppies. And I know she hasn't because I've groomed her her whole life. But, um... She's just that chubby. All right, so now we have our basic lines. And we need to talk about underarms, because she has mats. I almost always 
scoop out my underarms on a schnauzer right in there. There's a little divot in there. I use the corner of my blade to get up in there and get those out. The reason being, it's a friction area. Schnauzers don't like it when you pull on it. And that friction area will mat up. Again, right in there. I use my the corner of my blade to get up in there. And then I come down the other direction. What that also does, and it's a neat little trick, is it separates the leg from the body. So you have two separate entities there. Instead of one big wad, you have two separate entities. And you're not going to have anywhere near the matting that you would have otherwise. Now, real quick, with this dog, because she does come all the time, I'm going to be able to use a snap-on comb to set my length on my legs. I'm sorry. But I have another trick I want to show you real quick. A lot of times dogs have really, really soft cut like she does. It likes to fall down. And I like to use a little bit of hairspray sometimes, and I'm going to show you how to use it on her. First of all, you comb the hair down. Spray. Try not to drop your, your hairspray on the floor. And then comb it up. Before it has a chance to dry, you want to comb it up. And I know a lot of you are going, the owners don't understand, the owners don't like it. The owners will understand that you're getting a better haircut, which is why you're doing it. If you'll notice what that just did, that little bit of hairspray just gave me volume and shape. And the reason I want to do that is it's going to make the groom better for next time. You're going to end up with a leg that looks decent next time. Also, within about two days at the most, this is going to break down and be gone. It's the same hairspray I use it's called freeze it and they make three different kinds They make a root lift which you could put in while you're drying this is the mega freeze which is my favorite and then they have one that's flexible hold which you can actually brush out when you're done I like this one best it seems to hold better again just real quick it doesn't take much as you can see it doesn't take much and I know some of you are out there going, oh my God, she's using a human product on dogs. Da yep, I sure am. I do it a lot. This is hairspray. The ingredients in our hairsprays and the ingredients in dog hairsprays are almost identical. And this is easily available at any place we go. We can get it at Dollar General for Pete's sake. So anyway, I'm going to put my yellow snap-on comb on over a 40 and just stop pulling set my lines real quick it'll help me set my length really fast and really easy uh, 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 stop stop one thing i do i don't know if you noticed is i come straight down the foot i do that on shizu i do that on yorkies i do that on schnauzers straight down the foot and again we're going to take this and come straight down this is just going to set my length evenly on both front legs now if i were doing a show dog i obviously wouldn't do this if i were doing a show dog the legs would be chalked and stand up and i'd be scissoring and they would be upside down baseball bat shape where they're nice and tight at the bottom like the bottom of a baseball bat and then they flare out and then they get tighter as they go up most pets don't have the hair to do that and most owners can't maintain that much hair so we tend to use a zero comb for the legs on a lot of our dogs in here and it just gives us a real fast way to set our length now you can go longer if the dog wants longer furnishings or if the dog has a lot of hair now if i fluff it up again you're going to notice that I get really nice cylinders if she'll stop pulling. I can take my straight shears, round that foot off and straight up into the leg. 
round the foot off, go straight up into the leg. Hold it straight out and get the back of the leg straight. And when I do this, I'll have to turn her around to show you. I want the back of this elbow almost completely off. And if you have that leg out straight, you can really do that nicely. And then you want to blend it into the chest and into the body. And it can be tricky when they don't want to stand up. On the feet, I calm it down. Scissor my basic shape. And then I'm going to show you a neat trick. Put your foot down. You comb the hair all the way to one side, like I just did. And if it hangs off the side, you cut it. Comb it the other way. And the same thing. I'm trying not to trip over the microphone cord. If it hangs off the foot, you cut it. Then you go straight up into the leg. Comb it forward. If it hangs out from the foot, you round it off. When I was learning how to groom schnauzers, we called that cat feet. I don't know that they call it that anymore, but that's what I was taught. I just know that it gives you a really nice, tight, neat foot that goes straight up and down into the leg. And it's actually really a fast way to do it. Again, pick the foot up, round it off up and into the leg, straight up the back, nice and tight at the elbow. Any stray hairs that the snap-on didn't get, round the front. You could probably skip the step of rounding the foot, except that it does give you a way to get right up into the leg. And I'm using 8-inch shears for her legs. They're a little longer than I normally use, but they work great for this. Put your foot down. Okay, and then scissor. I mean, excuse me, comb to the side. If it hangs off, scissor it. Comb to the other side. If it hangs off, scissor it. Comb it straight down. If it hangs off, scissor it. And there you really do have some pretty nicely column legs for a pet. On the chest, comb it straight up. If it sticks out, get rid of it. And then down and under the chin, under the body. Now, back legs, very similar. I spray, and I don't spray a lot. It's just enough to get some body. Stand it up. When I run my snap-on comb down my back legs, I just do it on the front of the leg. And I even leave some fill down here rather than come straight off the top of the foot. Sometimes on her, I'm not going to because her mother really wouldn't care if she had any hair. So again, on her, I'm gonna come straight down. And then underneath, I'm gonna take this comb and go backwards all the way up and that's going to pretty much set my chest line because there's really not much hair or much there's not much hair there it's all skin scissor it up comb it forward because that's where it's going to hang scissor straight up and down in the hawk from the hawk down to the table Round the foot off again. And do the same thing on the back foot. Comb to the side, scissor. Comb it this way and scissor. 
And I tend to do it while I'm holding it, more so than when it's on the table. Voila. I'll come back and get the inside of that elbow because I don't like the way that looks. I always go back and double check them when I'm done, when I think I'm done, because I always manage to find something. And I'm literally at skin level under there. There's nothing left to cut. If I cut anymore, I'll be having blood everywhere, and I really don't like to do that, especially not on video. It's just never a good thing. All right, other leg. Come on, turn around. When you look underneath the dog like that from that angle, you can see if the elbows are tight enough or not. If the elbow's not tight enough, get that hair off. Sometimes you won't be able to see that from where you are, but you can see it once you turn the dog around. Now she's got hair that is actually part of her belly hair that I left as fill for her tuck up area because she has so much of tuck up. She's just so chubby. But this is what we see in regular to everyday salons. We see dogs that are not the best conformation. We see dogs that are heavy. We see dogs that are skinny. And it does make it harder to do our job sometimes. Just remember the lines are always the same. Just the way you get there may be different. Now, if a dog is incredibly fat, and we're talking a different breed like a cocker, I might actually even leave my lines a little high to accommodate that. It just depends on the dog. Sometimes lowering them makes the dog look less fat. Sometimes leaving them higher does. You just have to base it on the dog. However, on a schnauzer, generally speaking, it's the same whether the dog is fat or not. The only difference is gonna be how much of an under fringe you can leave how much furnishing you can leave underneath okay so i've got my leg basically set again and we're gonna scissor straight up and into the foot that's the key to every dog whether it be a Maltese or a Shizu or a Yorkie, you go straight from the foot up into the leg and that gives you flat planes, parallel lines. Now, comb to the left. And now comb to the right. touch anything up that's out of whack comb it forward now after I've done her toenails I will come back and shape that foot for one final time just to touch it up but essentially her body and legs skirt all that are done see this here is actually belly hair on her so you just have to make sure that it's scissored well nice and tight through there Okay, now let's finish up the head because I always do that last and I don't really know why but I always do that last other than toenails. Okay. Now, when you are cutting eyebrows, there's a trick to it and it's a really simple trick. First of all, fine tooth comb them forward. If they don't want to lay forward, which hers are doing a beautiful job of laying forward, but if they don't want to lay forward, you can use a little bit of hairspray or a little bit of gel, even a little bit of water, just to make them nice and crisp and neat and clean to the front. But the key, as I was taught, is to do them in as few strokes as possible so you don't end up with lines in them. So there we go, we got that. And we're gonna take our shear. And I like to use a curved shear. Some people like a straight shear, I like a curved shear. And you put it on, put the tip at the corner of the eye and the other part on the corner of the nose opposite. So if I'm doing this eye, I'm gonna go to this side of the nose. If I'm doing this eye, I'm gonna come to this side of the nose. 
And you can do it this way or you can do it this way. I prefer to do it this way. Once you get your line in place, what that does too is that bevels the eyebrow just a little bit so that you're opening it up from underneath and still allowing it to be long. It's a neat little trick. Holding it at that angle bevels it just a smidge and then you can go back and take your length off. One or two cuts is all that you really want to do so that you can avoid lines. Now that one's going to take me three or four, but there we go. Now you can shorten them or lengthen them depending upon the preference of the owner, but honestly this is a pretty good length for her. I think her owners are going to like it. And I always try to get them nice and sharp. I never succeed in doing it in one or two. Not on this side anyway. This eye is never that bad. The other eye is always an issue. And now, I'm going to take a blender and just right through here, bulk that out a little bit and shape it down into the beard so that it will lay flat. And the same thing on the other side. And I always try to come down and not up, and I'm not sure why that is, but that's just the way I like to do it. Now, right here, all this hair that likes to get in their lip, if the dog will let me, I like to take my thinners or blenders right in there and clean that up, and right on the bottom of the beard as well. Not super tight to where it looks like you can see skin, but just enough to get the hair out of their mouth. Now, one thing about her, her mom likes rounded, shorter beards. So you're going to get to see a little trick there. If the owner doesn't want the beard done anything to then leave it alone. Maybe neaten it up if it's really scraggly, but her mom likes shorter, rounder beards. So what I do, comb the hair down, I'm going to start off with my curved shear and I'm going to cut rounded down from my line. My line is up here and I'm just going to round it around into the other side. So it's literally just following the line completely all the way around from here around and then up and in to the other eye so that you end up with a continuous line. And then I take my thinner or my blender, and these happen to be curved. And shape it a little under there. You can tighten that up to get some of the bulk out if you need to. And then just soften it with my blenders. And then other than her toenails, she's all set. It's not the look I like that her mom does. Then to pull it forward and balance it out because they're not the same on either side, you want to make sure that it's the same shape on the front of both sides as well. And I'm doing that with my blender. Mom has cut some hair out of her face. She told me she did it at drop off. She said she had gotten something in it. And so I'm dealing with a lot of broken hair too that I wouldn't normally have a problem with. But some people take all the hair off the lip line. I'm not one of those people. I don't like to do that. I think it bulks out the beard a little too much for my liking. And when I'm already going round, it's not something I like to do. Now, in her case, I don't think it's quite tight enough. So I'm going to actually thin some of that out as well. But there you go. That's how you get a round beard. But you'll notice my lines are still the same. Everything's good. And other than her nails, she's done now. Except that I always see more hair. So hopefully you learned something. Remember, shoulder, muscle, 
from here to whisker mole to whisker mole, not back here, from here to here to here. Pluck only what needs to be plucked. If you can avoid plucking at all, you're better off. Keep the ear flat and roll. I think that's it. Hairspray if needed. Schnauzers don't have skirts. If you get nothing else out of this whole thing other than that, you've learned something. Schnauzers don't get skirts. And remember, it is the basic pattern for all grooming. If you can do this, you can do anything. Grooming smarter. Grooming by numbers. It's all easy. You just got to get all the complicated stuff out of your head. Till next time.